initial presentation and then our ability to answer uh, the questions. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure what you're There's no protocol violation in that meeting. No, 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 no. Yeah, I, I'm not aware of that because it's after the briefing already. And so, um, <laughs> yeah, the, the bubble has just passed us now. Okay. So, um, welcome, welcome to Roda. Uh, and Musk is optional. Uh, digital resilience for all uh, is our slogan. We're a relatively young ministry, uh, having found the uh, end of August. Uh, and so, I'll uh, just give a very brief tour. Uh, the next slide, please. Okay, so this is our, our logo, the Ministry of Digital Affairs, or MODA. I understand in some languages that means fashionable, uh, but in Taiwan, it's usually taken to mean uh, MODA, which is the Japanese uh, influence pronunciation of MODA. Uh, so we're a ministry of no um, like top down or lock down or shut down or take down. That's not our business, uh, not at all. Uh, when we're working, <laughs> right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Democracy Network Department is here, right? We're all about democracy and networking. We're not about takedown or shutdown or lockdowns or anything like that. Uh, that belongs to other uh, supervisory uh, commissions. And uh, indeed, uh, my work uh, is mostly to help uh, the entire society, including the industry, uh, on the front of cybersecurity, of building resilience, learning from the pandemic and disinformation uh, attacks in the past few years. Uh, to build a resilient network, to build what we call the vaccines of the mind. Um, and this is uh, very simple. Uh, I believe in your countries, uh, there's also uh, people who are um, hungry for uh, information during the pandemic times. Uh, and if the collective patient, if the scientific uh, epidemiology doesn't reach uh, such an amount of people, if the scientific communication doesn't become viral, then this information becomes viral. And people are uh, willing to believe in any sort of conspiracy theories when there's a distrust uh, for information and uh, clarifications do not reach people in time. The same goes uh, for our democratic results leading up to each and every election and referendum. Uh, there's uh, a lot of polarization, a lot of uh, like conspiracy theories and so on on um, uh, so-called social media, which is sometimes anti social media. And so our public uh, is to uh, work uh, with all the journalists, including professional journalists, uh, to ensure that they uh, learn the um, digital transformation as well as get plenty of resources uh, from the likes of people like Meta and so on, uh, not just uh, in kind donations, but also some an actual part of the advertisement revenue and so on, uh, to fund uh, actual journalists that write because we understand that journalism is like public health when it comes to the disinformation crisis. I mean, when uh, people like journal uh, people learn the art of fact checking, of understanding. Uh, sourcing and things like that, can people become a uh, result against uh, this information crisis? And that requires broadband communication uh, in the areas where people uh, are most testing uh, knowledge. For example, uh, when Russia uh, attacked Ukraine, uh, people all over the world uh, are thirsty for real time information. Uh, and everyone here probably remember uh, President Zelensky's uh, call. Uh, I need ammunition, uh, not the right, right? And, and so on. Uh, and consider if there's no uh, broadband internet at the time, if people do not have real time feed uh, to the President's Zelensky's <coughs> videos and so on, then the centers will feel this information and propaganda, uh, like Zelensky has already fled uh, or uh, things like that, right? So, uh, especially in disasters and war and so on, broadband communication in all areas that is the most important, which is also why uh, we work uh, with non geostationary stuff. Us, uh, to provide more than uh, at least 700 in the first batch uh, over the next couple of years, uh, sorry, the next couple of years, uh, to ensure real time, uh, like satellite feed, even when our southern high cables or mobile network and so on uh, may be threatened uh, by uh, natural disasters, but not natural disasters. Uh, so it's all uh, in the same uh, visual resilience concept. Next slide, please. So, Prior to MODA, uh, I served for six years 
as a minister, for example, earlier, or at large minister uh, in the cabinet office. Uh, we have uh, such ministers, each working on cross ministerial uh, issues. During pandemic times, uh, for the past couple of years, I served as the chief information officer uh, of the administration. Uh, and so we worked with many different information and digital related uh, sub agencies within the ministries of transportation and communication, with the National Communication Commission, uh, with the Ministry of Economic Affairs, uh, with the Department of Cyber Security, and so on. So each of these were one sub agency within a larger ministry, and the larger ministry did not have much to do with digital. So what we've done is essentially uh, look at the uh, agencies that we've worked uh, collaboratively with uh, most closely during the three years of the pandemic, half years, uh, and then uh, unite them together in your ministry. And so because of that, the coordination cost uh, has lowered a lot since the founding of the ministry, because pre previously this would require five ministers and ministers of portfolio uh, in order to, to, to do anything here, right? uh, which we, we managed to get done uh, thanks to the Central Academy for my son, so during the pandemic times, uh, but as we're now moving to post-pandemic, or at least post-pandemic, uh, we want the same agility, we want the same uh, like short iteration time, and that will require a new ministry, so that's the idea of our family of our ministry. Okay, so uh, as I mentioned, uh, our work is digitalism for all, and for all means benefiting everyone for the social benefit, that's the social development. Underneath the MODA, there are two administrations. The administration for industrial, uh, the digital industries, uh, industrial digitalization, uh, that's the ADI, that's the administration, and the emergency response, especially on safeguarding the uh, critical infrastructures and uh, government agencies and so on. That's the administration for cybersecurity. So the ADI and the ACS uh, are the two administrations under the MOBAT with their specific focus. Next slide, please. So, um, so that's the two administrations. Uh, and within the MOBA, uh, we have various uh, departments. So uh, what used to be uh, under different ministries are now all under MOBA, including strategy. Uh, communication and resilience, resource management, and 5G spectrum, and things like that. Uh, digital service, uh, democracy network, uh, which in other uh, ministries would be called international cooperation and things like that. But we work also uh, with like non-sovereign state entities, such as, I don't know, ICANN or Ethereum or WWC and things like that. So it's a kind of public diplomacy is also part of our democracy network as well. Uh, and also plural innovation uh, focuses on data oriented uh, exchange layers uh, between businesses and uh, non for profit organizations and government agencies and so on for the uh, exchange uh, of data and ideas in a way that enhances privacy. Uh, and so these are our uh, primary department. Next one, please. Right, so that's me. Uh, and uh, uh, we have our own uh, CIO and CISO, Dr. Adam Chip. Uh, who work uh, a lot with the National Development Council and uh, uh, actually was uh, the, the architect, who is the architect of our first uh, mobile non geostationary uh, use in fire services uh, in Xinju uh, to get the 5G uh, stations uh, mobile uh, while connecting to the other three, the other three building uh, non geostationary uh, network. Uh, so he knows a lot uh, about CIO and CISO related uh, work. Is responsible to also uh, report the latest in cyber security, such as zero trust, custom breach, and so on. Uh, first in our mainstream administrations, but then uh, horizontal to other ministries as well. Uh, and our deputy minister of the Biden, uh, we worked very closely together during the pandemic times. Uh, he was the architect for the uh, mask visualization, the mask creation, and mask pre ordering, uh, which then later on will become uh, reusing the national health insurance system, uh, rapid test uh, rationing, as well as booking for vaccination, and so on. So, this entire uh, CDCC related information architecture uh, he is the, uh, one of the principal architects. Uh, and we have uh, previously uh, head of my office in my minister at large's office, Pivis uh, Yin, uh, who is also our deputy minister now uh, in charge of. Uh, in addition to legal counsel, uh, also resource management. Uh, so we have people uh, from the academia, from the industry, and the career public service as well. Uh, next slide, please. Right. Uh, so uh, the MODA uh, it is quite unique uh, in that uh, we consider when um, 
recruiting people and determining the biggest salaries. Uh, we uh, say that you have X years of experience of actual contribution to cybersecurity and so on, then that is as good as a diploma. Uh, because personally, I'm a middle high school dropout. So in, in normal times, uh, in normal HR policies, I would not be even eligible uh, for a service uh, in the career public service. And even the recruits, the contractors, uh, for people like me who are high school dropouts, uh, we only get paid, I think, a fraction of PhDs and so on. But I actually have uh, a lot of uh, experience in coming startups and working with Apple, uh, Oxford University Press, and so on. So um, every year of my work, if I'm now to apply for a uh, job in the middle of that, I will count uh, similarly to work uh, diploma. And so that enabled us to recruit uh, a lot of, especially in the field of cybersecurity, uh, people with the appropriate salary. This is probably the first time that we're uh, possible to do some talent circulation with the private sector when it comes to cybersecurity personnel. Uh, otherwise, it's entirely out of bounds uh, because the um, PSNCs and other uh, terms companies are now paying a lot uh, for cybersecurity experts. Uh, later on this year, we'll also have uh, the uh, NICE, the National Institute of Cybersecurity, uh, which offers for technical staff even better salary uh, to work with the public service uh, for four years, for five years, uh, in order to use the country and to do the research and network. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, and that's it. Uh, our hashtag uh, is free the future, uh, meaning that uh, we want to work with uh, all the free and open and democratic uh, alliances uh, in the world. Uh, as uh, to paraphrase um, the previous pre uh, former president of Estonia, Lucas, when he visited Taiwan, he said that um, the NATO uh, was about uh, geopolitical proximity. Uh, but nowadays, with the internet, it's more about proximity of value uh, for people with very similar values, no matter whether they're in Eastern Europe or um, North or South America and so on. Uh, people do find their ways uh, to contribute to the defense of Taiwanese democracy. Uh, our own website, mobile.gov.tw, uh, uses the backbone uh, in addition to the traditional uh, content delivery network, the interplanetary file system, where people can donate uh, their resource, their hard disk, their values, and so on, to help us to maintain high availability of our uh, official websites and documents and communication uh, in times of uh, distributed uh, service attacks and so on. This is just one of the many ways uh, that the people around the world can help us defend our democracy. And in turn, uh, we publish as public of no copyright reserved uh, all the ways that we enhance our own results, not just for the other ministries to learn, but also for other countries who can, with no copyright restrictions, also do this kind of uh, research and cyber attack architecture in use uh, in their digital service. So let's free the future together. Uh, thank you for listening.